In this video, we will go over the programming problem called Catch the Cow. For the description of this problem, Farmer John has been informed of the location of a fugitive cow and wants to catch her immediately. He starts at a point called N, from 0 to 100,000 on a number line, and the cow is also at a point called K, also 0 through 100,000 on the same number line. Farmer John has two modes of transportation, walking and teleporting. When it comes to walking, Farmer John can move from any point x to any point x minus 1 or x plus 1 in a single minute. When it comes to teleporting, Farmer John can move from any point x to a point 2 times x in a single minute. Cow is unaware of its pursuit, does not move at all, we're trying to find out how long does it take for Farmer John to retrieve it. In this program, we have an input that is two space integers, n and k. Input that we would get is an integer representing the least amount of time in minutes that Farmer John takes to catch the fugitive cow. The example we are given is 5, 17 with the sample output of 4, meaning Farmer John starts at the position 5 on the number line and the cow starts at position 17 on the number line. And the output we should receive in this case is that it takes 4 minutes for the farmer to catch the cow. So how do we approach this problem? We are going to use BFS, or Breath First Search algorithm, to solve this problem. So looking at the information we currently do have, we have N, which represents the position of the farmer, which is 5 and k, which is the position of the cow, which is 17. With 5 being our starting node, we know that we have three different outcomes using our two options of movements, whether it be walking or teleporting. With walking, we have x minus 1 and x plus 1. And then we have teleporting. which is 2 times our x value. From here, we can draw three lines from this node to represent the three different movements. The first line will go to the node that will contain the value of 4, representing our first option of walking. The second node will represent our second option of walking, which will be 6. And lastly, the third node will be representing teleporting, which will be 10 in this case, since 2 times 5 will be 10. Now, one thing to note here is that in the next steps that we can take in terms of our movements, we can walk or teleport back to the spot that we've already been to, or in this case, visited. We do not want to redraw these nodes, as we will get a tree that will keep repeating itself in this case. So we, what we will need is to create a visitor array that will keep track of all the spaces that we have visited before to make sure we do not go over the same place twice. So in this case, our visitor array should keep track of that we have already visited the locations 5, 6, 4, and 10. So on to the next node. Starting from 4, we can now draw a new node that goes for 3 for x minus 1. Now, for x plus 1, we will go back to 5, and since we've already been there, there's no need to visit that location again, so we will skip that one. And then for the last node, for teleporting, it will be 2 times x, which in this case will be 8. For the next node, 6, we will skip x minus 1, since that will go back to 5. But we do have the next node for x plus 1, which will be 7 and then teleporting, which will be 12. For the next node, 10, we can go to 9 for x minus 1. We can go to 11 for x plus 1. And we can go for 20 for teleporting, for 2 times x. At this point, we are done with the current layer of possible moves, and we will move on to the next layer. Do note that each layer starting from the zero for the first layer will represent how many moves or minutes it takes to get to that location. So for example, the five would be, since it's our starting location, would be zero minutes. And then the second row, which is four, six, and ten, will be one minute, and so on. 
To continue on for node 3, we can go to location 2, we will skip 4, and skip 6 since these locations have been visited. For 8, we skip 7, we skip 9, but we do have 16. For 7, we skip 6, we skip 9, but we do have the node 14. For node 12, we can skip 11, but we can go to 13 and we can also go to 24. For node 9, we skip 8 and 10, but we can go to 18. For 11, we skip 10 and 12, but we can go to 22. And lastly, for node 20, we can go to 19, 21, and 40. Now this finishes our next layer of movement, which represents 3 minutes of movement. Keep in mind that our target goal is the location of the cow, K, which we have noticed as 17. Without drawing the rest of the graph, we can already see that we can reach the location in the next move, which is 4 minutes from these particular nodes. We have, for example, 16, which can go to 17 via x plus 1, for example. Or we also have the node 18, which can go to 17 via x minus 1. And this answer would have been reached in the layer that represents 4 minutes of movement, which matches our sample output of 4. Do note that we could have used death first search for this, but this potentially can get lost as searching down one possible path can lead us pretty far when the solution can be found much sooner. So now visually, we know how to do this, so how do we code this? Starting from a blank program, we are going to need the library queue. We will be using the first in first out data structure for our BFS searching. Let's declare a global struct called at. This struct will have two types of variables, one int for location and the second int for time. After that, we will make two integer variables n and k to match the description of the problem. We will create a visited array of type bool of size 100,001, which is the maximum number that the line can reach to. When we declare our array as global, the values will be set to zero, which will represent that the location has not been visited. Now in the main function, we will create a queue of my struct act and call it my queue. We then obtain the two space separated user input n and k. We do not need to initialize these variables as they are already declared as global variables. We have one location that has already been visited, and that is our starting location. So with the user input n, we will make our visited of that location to be true. We will then create a struct called current move and new move. Inside of current move, we will make the location equal to n, our user input.
Since this is our starting location, we will make our time component zero. We will then push current move onto my cube. Now we will do the BFS searching. We will create a while loop, and while the queue is not empty, we will do this loop. We obtain the first object of the queue and put it into current move, and then pop the queue. We check if the location we are currently looking at matches the cow's location, K. If it is, we will print the time it took to get there and leave this loop. If not, we will continue searching. As we search, we will first handle moving backwards one location. We write an if statement if the current move location is greater than zero and the location in our visitor array is not visited yet, we will do some things. First, we will say that our new moves location is our current location minus one. We then increase our time of our new move by one. We then mark our visitor array for that location to be true. And then we push the new move onto my queue. Now we handle the second possibility, which is moving forward by 1. We check if the current location is less than 100,000, and if the move that we are trying to go to is visited or not. We then make a new move that is our current move's location plus one. We then increase the current time and store it into the new move's time. We then mark our visitor array to be true for that location. Then we push the new move onto my queue. Lastly, we need to handle teleporting. We check if the current location is less than or equal to 50,000, and if the location that we want to visit has been visited or not.
We then make a new move with its location being our current move's location times 2. We increase our time by 1 again. We then mark our visitor array. And then push the new move onto my queue. That concludes our problem with our BFS search. Now using this program, let's try the sample output we received earlier to see if we obtain the same output. And as you can see, we obtained 4.